Hey guys, I'm getting ready to plant some Red Rover Hookerillas out at my parents' house in their garden. That's this guy right here. And my mom really loved this plant and this is kind of what she wanted planted in the area she's got available. So I thought that this would be a great opportunity to go over the differences between a hookera, a hookerella, and a tiarella because all of them sound similar, they have a similar look, but they are different plants and have different characteristics. So I thought we would start with the hookera first because that's the most well-known. They're also called coral bells, that's their common name, but they come in, I don't even know how many hundreds of different colors and sizes, uh, ranging in color from this beautiful chartreuse green to yellows, silvers, uh, orange, red, maroon, brown, black, I mean, just an array of colors. And that's what we use them for mostly in a shady spot in our garden is a little pop of color. Um, they do bloom as well. They come up with spiky blooms up above their foliage. This is a Dolce Appletini Hookera. Blooms the most beautiful bright pink blooms in spring. But the thing I think most people don't realize about Hookeras is they do need a little bit more sun than we think in order to perform and color up properly. We kind of treat them like skin tones. The lighter color of leaves means the more protection they need. So like a fair person needs protection from the sun because they burn easier. Same with the hookeras. So your greens, your yellows and silvers need more protection than the darker colored ones like the brown and maroon and reds. So hookeras don't want full sun nor do they want full shade. They need something in the middle. But know that if you put it in a spot and it looks like it's getting too much sun and it's burning, just move it to a shadier spot. Uh, it's really easy to do. They're really resilient, tough plants. The other thing about hookeras is that they do not like to be in waterlogged areas. They need to be in a spot that's well draining. The second type of plant I want to talk about are tiarellas. I don't have any examples here with me, but we do have pictures to show you. So you can see in the picture that their leaves are not as rounded as a hookera. They're much deeper lobed. They're much pointier. Uh, most of the foliage is more of a green color, but they do have a design toward the center. These are known as a classic woodland plant because you can find them growing naturally in woodland areas. This one right here in the pictures is called Jade Peacock. It's gorgeous, very beautiful color. They can handle a lot more shade than hookeras. They um, prefer full to part shade and they can take more moisture than hookeras. So if you've got an area that's more shade, more moist, put a tiarella in there and it'll do really, really well. Tiarellas also come in clumpers or runners. So the clumping type tiarellas will form a nice clump of leaves and they'll stay more contained. And then the running type will kind of make themselves into a nice ground cover. The Jade Peacock variety here is a clumping type. And the last group are hookerellas, which is a gorgeous group of plants. I've got two varieties right here. This one is the Red Rover, like I said earlier, and this one is called Hopscotch. And these are a marriage between a hookera and a tiarella. So you take those two plants, put them together, you get a hookerella. So it's taking the best out of both of those type of plants and putting it together. Can take more shade, but with better color, can withstand a little bit more moisture. You've got the just the beautiful coloring on these ones. That's my favorite part of the hookerellas. Uh, the hopscotch, you can see deeper down in the plant, the newer leaves are more of a copper orange and then they age to this more green color. So hookerellas like those spots where it's a little bit more shady, but you still want that really pretty pop of color. So as a quick recap, we've got hookeras here, which can take a little bit more sun depending on the color of their foliage and they do like well-drained soil. The tiarellas like more shady conditions and more moist soil. And then we've got the hookerellas, which you get the best of both worlds with that plant. Uh, these are all really great examples of plants that do well in shadier spots in the garden. And I get asked that quite a bit. So that's really why I wanted to go over this to give you guys some options and show you some beautiful plants. They're also great in containers. I put some of these Red Rovers and Hopscotch in my fall containers and they're absolutely gorgeous. A really pretty alternative to like those ornamental cabbage and kale because they've got that weighty, bold foliage. They're just beautiful. So I hope that you guys found this information helpful. Uh, remember that in the next video, I'm gonna be planting some of these Red Rovers in my parents' garden and I'll kind of give you a little tour of the spot where we're putting them. So I hope you like this video. Make sure to leave a like down below and we will see you in the next one. Bye.